the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ our Lord. We are His new creation by water and the Word. From heaven He came and sought us to be His holy bride. With His own blood He bought us, and for our life He died. Good morning. May God's grace and peace be in us and for us this morning as we offer God our heart and worship. May His Holy Spirit ignite in us a passion for Him, and may He become manifest in this room today. Would you please rise as we offer God our heart through song, singing hymn 272, The Church's One Foundation. Join me to the, with a call to worship. O oh Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver that one. You are a shield around me, O oh Lord. You 
bestow glory on me and lift up. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the tens of thousands drawn up against me on every side. Let us pray. Indeed, Father, you are our shield and protection. You lift us when we are weak. We praise you and your only boast in your mighty Son, Jesus Christ. By his spirit and blood, we come to sing of your majesty and strength. Bless us as we worship you. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord loves our weakness, and there are many people in our midst today that have gone through a difficult time, many of whom are with us today. Jeannie Chavez experienced a difficult time. She's with us as we continue to pray for her husband. Uh, Shirley Sharp, I saw somewhere. Hey, Shirley. Shirley, welcome back. We missed you. Um, We've got lots of people that are are here today that uh, have been absent through health reasons and life reasons, and we rejoice. We also remember that when we come to the Lord, it's okay to come as one who's lost, as one who's broken, because in our weakness, His strength is made and power is made perfect. 
We found out this morning just before worship that one of our brothers in the Lord, David Mayfield, has passed away. We've been praying for David the last couple weeks, and he's a strong member of the 60 Minutes class. Uh, continue to pray for Donna as we find out more information about this. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, we do not trust in our own strength. We do not trust in the strength of the war horses, even of all the mights of all the nations. We do not ultimately trust in science, effort, or the resilience of the human spirit. We trust in you. We trust in your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. And we trust in the Holy Spirit, promised from heaven to be sent to persevere the saints. We thank you for all resources you give us, from medication and help on earth, but ultimately our hope is not in those things. Lord, let the redeemed of the Lord say so that our hope is in Jesus Christ. Life is interesting. We ramp up the first 18, 20 years, and then at some point we go over this hill and we start to experience the loss of abilities, the loss of sight, the loss of energy. But we do not experience the loss of Christ. We do not experience the loss of the Scriptures and the Holy Spirit. And indeed, Father, the wisdom of Christ's church is that as we age, we are stronger. As we mourn, we are stronger. And as we lay down and die, we lay down into the arms of Jesus Christ to receive a resurrected body. Lord, as we worship you this morning, may we worship you as you are our only strength, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. May we not worship ourselves. May we not worship this nation. May we worship Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, reassure our hearts and pour into us this morning of this gift, of this strength and power. Baptize us, we pray, in the Holy Spirit. May we all walk out of here with wet hair. May we eagerly desire you. And may you not withhold, but open up the storehouse of heaven and fill us to the brim with every spiritual gift. We pray this, Father, in the almighty and authorized name, the name that's been revealed, Jesus Christ. Amen.
May these words, may this action in this moment be for you this morning the means, the place where Christ shows up, where he speaks a word into your heart, where he reminds you of his word. Let's not miss this. In obedience to the will of the Father, knowing that he would lay down his life only to have the Father take it up again. Jesus gathered his disciples beforehand in an upper room to celebrate the Jewish Passover feast. During the meal, Jesus took a loaf of bread. He blessed it. He broke it, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Take and eat, all of you. And whenever you gather and you eat from this bread, eat in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we're blessed to be in your house this morning and all here to be invited to your table where as we take this loaf, this bread, we remember why your son, Jesus, died on the cross, his broken body, we remember this because he did it for us, for our sins, nothing he did, and to give us a chance for everlasting life. We love you, Lord. Follow your son's teachings and love each other. We pray for your will in our lives and the knowledge to carry it out. In Christ's holy name, amen. Amen. And then the cup. Jesus filled it with wine, symbolically representing the blood of the lamb from the Passover. And Jesus gave this cup an extraordinarily new meaning. For after thanking the Father, he said, This cup has become for you a new covenant with God, and it is filled with my blood, for the forgiveness of sins for many people. Take and drink, all of you, and whenever you gather and you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we bless you, O God, with all our hearts. As we drink of this cup, we remember that all forgiveness, all health, all power is a gift from you an expression of your loving kindness. Be your tender mercies we find ourselves welcomed unto the presence of the living Christ, as you have given the cold waters of spring to nourish the ground and to satisfy our, all creation. So you have given us a chance to drink of the living water of faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior. As we drink from this cup of communion, accept the blessing and thanksgiving we offer in your holy name. Amen. Amen.
Please join me in remembering Jesus through John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Our musical offering this morning is going to come through the organ. In your printed order of worship, there are lyrics to a hymn, When Morning Gilds the Sky. I recommend reading and singing in your heart, or with your voice if you're bold, (laughs) along as uh, Daryl leads us in this musical offering of praise. This is also an opportunity for the church to offer a financial offering of praise to the Father. We will now receive tithes and offerings.
Father, may you in this hour remove anything from our heart other than the desire that Jesus Christ be praised. Everything we have is based on the greatest gift you've given, your own Son, your only begotten. And Lord, from all of our thoughts and actions this week, may we not be driven that we would be praised, May we be driven that Jesus Christ be praised. May his cross be lifted up, and may the church sing songs by the way we live in the world for your kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The children are invited forward. Good morning. So today in Children's Church, y'all are going to be talking about confidence. And I don't mean just confidence in ourselves, but confidence that everything that God says is true and confidence that we can trust him no matter what we're going through. Brody, can you read our scripture? I remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Psalm 27, 13. Thank you. And Vincent's going to pray for us. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the food. And thank you for our families and friends. And hope that all the people that are sick or endangered animals get better. And all the people that or having a hard time if like their family members died or anything make it where they will have a better time and make them happier amen amen, amen. very good <laughs> Please rise for the reading of our Holy Scripture. The Scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between Spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. The word of the Lord. Before you sit down, I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them that Jesus loves them and there's nothing they can do about it. Jesus loves you and there's nothing you can do about it.
Okay, all right, all right. Let's find our seats, and we will pray and meditate on the Word together. Gracious Lord, how blessed a moment it is to be in unity. Jesus says, where two or more are gathered in agreement, that's important, in agreement, there I am among you. God, we agree. We agree that you are a good God, and we agree that Jesus does love us. There's nothing we, seem we can do about that. We just need to adjust to it. We also agree that we are living lives that are not near where we could be. And for this, we turn to your scriptures and to your Holy Spirit and ask you to take us deeper than our feet would wander. Pull us underwater, Lord. Baptize us. And show us, Father, the great gifts of the Holy Spirit that comes from heaven. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This summer is going to have a lot to do with the Holy Spirit. And uh, for the next three weeks, we'll be focusing on the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Uh, these do include, in three weeks, the gift of speaking in tongues. So if you're Pentecostal, congratulations. If you're Church of Christ, I'm sorry. Uh, the reason we teach these is because they are explicitly taught in the Scriptures. Um, and no gift of God is intended to be divisive. That's the work of the enemy. The work of Jesus Christ is to take the things of God and unite the bride of Christ, the church, under the uh, submission that God is good and every gift He gives is good. Now today, we're going to enter into this focus and then talk about the gifts of revelation. Uh, the main thing to, to, to run with right now is the word manifest has been on my heart recently. And uh, in fact, there was a, a text that came this week from, from one of you that had a dream and that word manifold or manifest kept coming up, which was a great uh, affirmation for me to go ahead with this series. For something to become manifest means that it becomes overwhelmingly obvious. I'm sure you've all had experiences of looking at a photograph versus actually traveling to or experiencing the actual. Uh, I think we should stop taking pictures of the Grand Canyon, for instance. They don't work. They don't do it justice, and you just need to go there if you have the means. Uh, before service, I know this is semi-blasphemy to say, I was talking to some friends, some fellow Aggies, about Kyle Field, and I was telling them they have to go to Kyle Field because it's one thing to see Texas A&M football stadium on camera. It's another thing to be there in person. You can wait your tomatoes and throw them later. <laughs> Manifest means taking something that's true and allowing it to become real, obvious. And that's the nature of the spiritual gifts. They're called gifts and manifestations of the Holy Spirit. And without the manifestations we tend to keep the Holy Spirit as, a, as an idea or a doctrine. A thing, not a person. But the Holy Spirit is a member of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He is the love of God. And His greatest desire is to lift high the cross of Christ and to preach to the church that you are a child of God and to preach through the church that redemption comes through Christ alone. The Holy Spirit wants to be manifested in the church. And so, before we break down the specific gifts that St. Paul names, there's a few things to know about the nature of spiritual gifts, the nature of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The first is, the reason the Holy Spirit shows up in a person, in you, is so that you will be used by Him to build another Christian up. That's the nature of the Spirit's of the manifestation of the Spirit, that you would receive something so that you and particularly your brother and sisters in Christ could be built up. It's for strengthening faith. Spiritual gifts aren't for necessarily growing the church. They're not for, uh, sorry Benny Hinn, they're not for TV. They're not fantastic. They're not a, a celebrity show. They're not... Uh, anything to be marketed. In fact, we see regularly in Scripture the condemnation of marketing the gospel for money. Rather, the Holy Spirit 
manifest in your life is intended that you would give that gift away to somebody else in the church. So first off, the spiritual gifts are built primarily to be builders of the faith, builders of the church, because you and I both know that life can be hard and that we need help. We need each other. Number two, spiritual gifts require heaven's gifting. And that's important to say because a lot of times people say, God has given me this ability. But what they're referring to is a natural ability. Some people have the ability to speak or to cook or something like that, which are great abilities. Tom Johnson, I don't know where we would be without you. Like, since you joined the church, we are all gaining weight. Thank you. <laughs> Cooking and, and, and hosting, those are great gifts that God wants to claim and redeem. Those are incredibly important gifts, but they're natural gifts. The gifts of the Spirit aren't natural. And I think that's what bothers us. Is when we talk about spiritual gifts, we want to make them all secularized. Well, you have the gift of encouragement, you have the gift of hospitality, and you have the gift of administration, which are all great gifts. But the Holy Spirit gifts are explicitly named in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14. Nine different gifts that are all beyond our ability. I don't like the word supernatural. It's a weird word for me. But they are more than our nature. They're from heaven. And lastly, the last thing I want to say about the, the generality of the Holy Spirit's gifts is that they are expressions of faith to build faith in others and in yourself, but they are activated and stirred by love. If I have the gift of prophecy, but I don't have love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging symbol. If I have the ability to speak in tongues of angels, but I have not love, if I have the ability to give over everything, the gift of, of exceeding generosity, but I have not love, I've lost everything. Love is patient. Love is kind. I'll stop there. The reason I asked us to turn to our neighbor this morning and pass the peace of Christ, and secondly say Jesus loves you and there's nothing you can do about it, is because the love of the saints stirs the Spirit. He loves to love because he is love, and he loves when he gets to flow in between people. The actual expression of love in the church is not hallmark. It's not, to, it's not a church growth strategy. It's the nature of the blessed communion, a beloved community through Christ. And so the three things is the Holy Spirit's manifestations becoming obvious is to build and strengthen faith in the church. They have to be given from God and not produced by us. And finally, they're stirred up by love. And this morning, we're going to be looking at the category of gifts called the gifts of revelation. Next week, we will look at the gifts of power. And finally, the third week, we'll look at the gifts of inspiration. The three gifts of revelation are the gift of the message of wisdom, the gift of the message of knowledge, and the gift of the discernment of spirits. Wisdom, knowledge, discernment of spirits. I'll quickly teach each one, but more in a proclamation style, because I believe today we're supposed to leave with wet hair, baptized by the Holy Spirit. I'll teach and then give a testimony. The spiritual gift of wisdom. To have things revealed from God means things that you can't discover, things that you can't go figure out or manipulate or create. It has to be revealed to you. The book of Revelation, for instance, is the book of running into the kitchen and mom lifting the lid so you can see what's for supper. You wouldn't know unless she showed you. This is the word of God revealing things that have been concealed. And so these three gifts are for revealing the concealed. The gift of wisdom is often confused with the gift of knowledge. The gift of wisdom is to be given by God God's perspective on something. You're just at the communion table, you're sleeping at night, and God wakes you up. He speaks to you maybe while you're reading Scripture, and He's speaking about something that you're not reading about. It's something secondary, and He comes in and He has a word to speak, His perspective on something, how God sees it. 
how God sees you. And if you have never seen how God sees you, that's, that should be something you pursue with all your might. Because who cares how you see you or how I see you? We want to know how God sees us. I can't share this testimony too boldly because it's uh, divisive. Uh, there's a political matter that is overwhelmingly involved in church, uh, preached about dividing. There are churches who are on one side of the issue, churches who are on the other side of the issue. So I'm not going to talk about what the topic is. My wife has regularly received the gift of wisdom. While sleeping, Valerie woke up uh, at that holy hour, 3.15, 3 to 3.30. I always joke, is, is it Central Standard Time, Eastern Standard Time? I don't know, but that time between 3 and 3.30, people just wake up and you keep waking up and be aware of that. She woke up um, ever aware of a topic that's real popular and she heard clearly, clearly from the Lord, no. He wasn't mad. He wasn't raging, petulant. He just spoke. I do not bless this. No. And while the world, and again, I can't talk about the issue. I know I'm leaving you hanging. I'm sure you can read through the lines. Everyone's freaking out and talking and politicizing and using science and dividing and reading Scripture and twisting Scripture and doing everything they can. And I get to rest because my family's heard from the Lord. God does speak through the Holy Spirit, through the gift of wisdom. God does give glimpses into heaven. You may be one of these people who has experienced a powerful, close-to-death, near-death experience and saw things that science can't explain. But the gift of wisdom is the gift of God breaking in and speaking an authorized word into his church that will be biblical and to clear up any confusion. God is not trying to trick us. He's given us the scriptures, and he backs it up with his spirit, not because truth is muddled, but because it's designed to be clear. And when he gives us clarity, it solves a thousand problems. As I preach and say these things, just know I'm a safe person to come talk to if you experience these things. There are other people in the church, other elders in the church that we would love to pray with you. But if you have clarity, not a political axe to grind, not a Facebook post to share, but clarity from Jesus Christ, the Father and the Holy Spirit on something, I would love to hear it. I am dependent on you. We are one body. St. Paul will write in the next section, one body, many members. The hand can't say to the foot. The head can't say to the eye. We all work together to bring in the Word of God and to live by it. Secondly is the gift of knowledge. The gift of knowledge is not necessarily God's perspective on something, but it is access and knowledge of something that's going on, most likely on earth. Moms say pretty often that they have an intuition that something's going on with one of their kids. This gift has been expressed multiple ways in this church, way before when I got here, but it's been experienced many times since I've been here. We have a man in our church, Mike Chase, that can share his testimony with you. Mike and Linda, uh, there's, there's others. Experience um, the knowledge of things that they shouldn't know. In fact, Mike, 20 years ago, 18 years ago, uh, went through the horrific uh, experience of seeing his son die 45 days before he did die. Mike saw the field where the car wreck would take place. Mike saw the barbed wire that would be next to the field. Mike saw everything, and Mike thought for 15, 20, for a long time that this was a curse. Mike and I sat down. Do you remember that? I said, don't you dare give the devil that kind of credit. Later, strange, 
Mike called me because he was driving home from Rio Dosa with the Green Streets and a few others. Uh, I would love an invitation on those trips, by the way. I'm just saying. Uh, driving back, and uh, Mike was a little erratic with his speed, and the reason he was is because he saw in his windshield a vision of Arnold Palmer saying, like he's in, on camera, I'm dying today. I've lived the life. I'm pleased to live, and I'm glad to live. And he got into an airplane and flew off. And Mike called me and said, you wouldn't believe it, but I saw Arnold Palmer, and this was on a Sunday morning. It's okay. We don't always make it to church, but he was, she saw this vision, and he called me about it. Six, no joke, 6.30 that night, I'm at home watching ESPN. The ticker on the bottom says, golf legend Arnold Palmer died today. Now you could say, this is all fooey, this is fantastic. What does this have to do with Jesus Christ? I don't know how it works. I just know that it is. And ever since then, whenever I'm going to bless somebody's house or going into a difficult scenario, I call Mike Chase. Because Mike Chase can see things I cannot see. St. Paul said there will be eyes in the body of Christ. There will be ears in the body of Christ. Some of you may have had these experiences. Severe intuition on something that's taking place in real time or is about to take place. And the gift of knowledge is difficult because there's no obedience associated with it. You don't save it. You don't stop it. You don't intervene. All you get to do is know. And God is glorified by saying, Hey, Mike, nothing that happens on earth is outside my knowledge. Hey, Rose, nothing that happens is outside what I'm, what I'm sovereignly going to redeem in the end. I know, says the Lord. I see, says the Lord, everything. Number three, the gift of discernment of spirits. You may have this experience. When you're around somebody, probably a new person, Several people may be drawn to that person, but you look at them and you see bad news. Have you ever had that? Or you may see somebody that's being trampled and yelled at and persecuted, and you may look at them and see good things. We have a new woman in our midst today, and I'm not going to share her story fully, but she has Ex regular experiences of discernment of spirits, hired somebody on her team that she knew she shouldn't have hired, but she needed somebody on her team. It was only a, months later that things became completely evident that she should have gone with her gut on that one and intuition because that person, although her resume looked great, she looked fine personally, physically, there was something wrong. Discernment of spirits is the ability given to the church for the church to hear from a person, from you, hey, we should be listening to that guy. Or hey, we shouldn't listen to that guy anymore. It's not intended to start coups and overthrows, but it's a gift given of intuition so that the church of Jesus Christ doesn't listen to false teachers. Jesus said, there are three types of people. There are sheep, there are wolves in sheep's clothing, and there are goats. Do you know how to tell the difference between the three? By what they eat. The sheep eat the word of God. The goats eat anything that the world feeds. Tuna fish cans, anything. The sheep, or the wolves in sheep's clothing, do you know what they eat? They eat the sheep. The discernment of spirits is a gift given to the church so that the church is not susceptible to being led astray into listening to somebody who's actually not here for Christ, but here for the enemy. I know that's an uncomfortable topic, but it's a topic Jesus Christ himself consistently preached. I speak these gifts over the church today. Because I believe the Holy Spirit is moving in our midst through love. And that if you're experiencing something, a manifestation, 
the Holy Spirit becoming obvious in some way. That gift is not for you to keep. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are to be given away, spoken and shared, and continue to do so with love, which is the greatest gift, the greatest grace in the church. But it's important to remember, God is still God. And God, according to Scripture, is one God and three persons. The Father, the Son, and who? The Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Bible. The Holy Spirit. And the Holy Bible testifies to these things, but there are many Christians to this day that reject, neglect, and grieve the Holy Spirit because we have created a new trinity. The Father, Son, and Holy Bible. Now, I love the Bible. But God has given us himself, his love, his passion, and his presence by the power of the Holy Spirit. And this morning, this is good news that God wants to give himself to us. May our hair be wet. May we go home baptized. And may chaos be allowed and order will come. I say these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we do acknowledge the truth that we in many ways have become skeptical and neglectful and even resistant to your movement in our lives, Father. Heal us, and Lord, we pray you systematically, consistently put in a desire for you and the fulfillment of that desire at the same time. May we want your Holy Spirit more deeply than we've known. May we not fear you, but may we live to learn to live by the Spirit of God and not by the flesh. We pray this, Lord, in the mercy and strength of the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Let's rise as we sing our closing hymn. This is an opportunity, if there's anyone here that would like to come forward to join our church or would like to come forward for the first time and profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior.